Okay, so the plan is we're going to get one of these onto one of these so that we can have music video on tape. Uh, and the resolution is going to be quite low because, uh, I mean, we're dealing with like four millimeters of tape, three millimeters. And this is eight millimeters. Uh, also, I mean, this has got digital encoding uh, and this is all uh, acoustic, so, uh, or sorry, analog, so we need to um, go away from encoding it so it works. Uh, I mean, this can be heard as an audio signal, the composite feed from that. Uh, and we're going to try and use that for this. One problem that I thought was present was the noise from the tape, because this looks like it's uh, a non-ferric one. Uh, so I thought about using Dolby noise reduction. Um, and the way that works is, I mean, if this is a clean signal, um, Dolby noise reduction actually increases um, the high end um, of the signal. And because most of the uh, signal that composite uses is sort of in the um, high end. Uh, I thought that increasing the high end uh, and I, I, the, the decoding of Dolby brings it back. Uh, so basically, you've got the same amount of tape noise, but when you um, use Dolby uh, noise reduction on the output, then uh, both the signal and the noise is reduced so that it goes back to when you recorded it. Uh, as well as using that last um, that method with Dolby noise reduction, also tried using uh, ground loop isolators because I thought the interference of the 50 hertz and uh, 50 hertz mains and then the 100 hertz from um, some of the transistors, not transistors, uh, transformers. Uh, I thought they might have been interfering with the low end because I noticed the low end um, seems to change the um, well to different values of the signal. Um, so the problem is, I um, did some research, basically this is kind of a rough thing of the, sig uh, the signal. Most of the important ones are on the high end, but when you record on tape, um, there's only a certain limit. Um, well, there's a limit to the range of frequencies that I can use. Um, so it cuts off a lot of these. Uh, you, you might get a wee bit, um, but basically on the screen, that just ends up as black and white lines, which is no good, which do um, respond to the video, but it's very abstract. And I'm kind of wanting some um, resemblance of, of the video feed. So my next plan was to use an octave down pedal uh, for the decoding, and then an octave up pedal when decoding. And the way this works is, uh, I mean, just a simple, quick, um, representation of, of some of the waves. Not very accurate. But, um, I mean, for example, it might get rid of every second wave uh, and basically half the sample rate. Um, and I mean, the effect of this is, uh, you can kind of see from before, um, the range of frequencies. Step it down an octave, uh, it should be exactly half, but uh, this way we can pick up a lot more audio. And there might be some low range frequencies uh, that are missed. Um, but the most important ones seem to be at the high end because that seemed to be um, kind of brightness values. Um, and, and lower down kind of seemed to be um, kind of some effects on shadows and uh, not quite sure what this was. Um, but after that we can decode it using a um, octave up pedal. Yeah, so we decode it there and then we can uh, re-encode it and basically, hopefully, we'll get the whole range of frequencies, ignore that line. Um, but the one issue is this pedal is digital, so unfortunately it might not work because it might not see this as uh, useful for, um, for, for, for music and it might just cut that out to save resources. But, um, I'll give it a shot and see how it goes. I've also bought a load of these tapes uh, and they were really cheap and they're five minutes long so it saves me going through a load of things. And I can just label these as like test one or whatever. Um, that should make things a bit easier. So the first test is gonna be the camera, the octave down, then the digital mixer, cassette player, and then we'll monitor it with a TV. I did notice from putting the camera into the digital mixer, uh, you can get a picture out but the resolution has dropped, and I think that's because this um, 
cuts out some of the higher frequencies. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of um, playing on wishful thinking, uh, where in an ideal world this picks up every frequency. Uh, so hopefully, in this, I will get every single frequency. Uh, drop that down, uh, pop it into here, pop that into there, and then into the TV, and then the frequencies that this lost before won't matter. Um, they will matter later when I uh, look back at this tape and try and do the process in reverse. But this is just a test. Also, I think for the test, I'm going to try this in stereo first. So I'll have one output going from here to here, one output going from here to here, and a stereo output going into the cassette tape, uh, just to increase the kind of potential resolution. Uh, because instead of using half the tape, it would be using the whole thing. Um, there will be two different tracks, but it means that there'll be a stronger signal, hopefully. The second thought, the TV is going to be left out of the chain initially because that puts a 50 hertz signal back, uh, which might confuse the signal. Okay, so the thing here behind doing an octave down is so that it will be in the range of audio that the tape player can record. And that will also mean that, fingers crossed, uh, it will have the resolution. Um, so instead of like uh, 480p, it will be um, like 240. But I mean, doing it this way means there will be kind of inconsistencies, which I'm quite looking forward to. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of seeing what the uh, influence of that will be, maybe half frame rate or something. Um, but either way, it'll, it'll be more easy to be re reproduced on a tape because uh, you're cutting out every second frequency. Um, I am letting it kind of go in the red as well. Uh, I found from recording on this that um, going in the red doesn't actually clip the audio, but um, I'm going to test it out both ways um, because I think that if I clip it, uh, all the colour data is at the top and clipping it will just change kind of the contrast um, and it will make the blacks a lot darker and the whites, um, well the, the whites will, there will be a different threshold so there will be more extremes between black and white. Um, I'm also trying this with, oh, I've, yeah, I'm also trying this with Dolby Noise Reduction which I forgot to do on this take. Okay, so from the sounds of it, we seem that we have uh, a lot of very low frequencies. And a lot of these seem to be um, below the range of human hearing, although a lot are in that range. Um, so you kind of get like um, subsonic kind of frequencies, uh, which kind of create this really nice rumble. That also <laughs> won't be picked up great by the tape. But, um, I mean, fingers crossed. Uh, and you've got the very high end. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of um, mid-range audio. So my thought is um, we could have a stereo track where we can fill this with kind of mid-range instruments. Um, and uh, I mean vocals could kind of go in here so we could have a uh, voice in there. Or um, even if we had guitar which does have uh, lower range frequencies as well. Um, we could uh, digitally edit that so that um, we basically flatten the audio. Um, so the well, we can reduce the bass to nothing and only have the range of frequencies that aren't taken up by the high and low end of the video signal. We've got two channels as well. So one of these channels uh, we could say left. This can be full of this uh, tinny audio of guitar, vocals, whatever, and also the video signal. Uh, and the right could be um, a full range of audio, um, and it wouldn't really matter, we could do anything we want in there. But this is just kind of proof of concept, we'll have to see how it goes. Okay, it looked like there's some sort of, it looks look as though there's some sort of clipping um, going back there. I did notice that the green app model seems to add more high end, so it's possible that that's the reason for the clipping. And 
uh, I mean, this isn't recorded with the with the red amp mod on, but um, there seems to be a lot less noise there. This is with Dolby noise reduction on, but this is too high. And what affecting the? Uh, I mean, we might be getting a picture there, but it's just it's kind of capturing the light values. And uh, when you kind of hear the liar, uh, liar, the, the, the louder drone, that's um, uh, that's the higher sort of um, brightness images. I'm getting confused with terminology, trying to think of um, between sound and video. So just from listening to this one, this is a um, pitch down of two octaves. So it's um, down uh, 14 steps. It seems that. Uh, a lot of the low end is lost. I mean, you can hear the high end buzzing about there. That should be recorded quite well. Um, but the low end seems to be lost. So the only thing I can think of is if we had um, different pitch values for left and right. So for left, we go down seven steps and record. On right, we go down 14 steps. And then we put that back um, to where it was. Uh, this way, hopefully, um, the tape will be able to record the high end and low end without there ever any sort of um, any frequencies missed out. One thing is you'd need two pitch pedals for that, which isn't very doable. Um, just because I, I want to make it so that some people can uh, decode it, but having one pitch pedal is asking a lot already. Having two pitch pedals seems to be asking a fair amount.